Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs and uh, today I'm gonna show you one of my uh, clocks with vintage display technology. Now, as you see uh, the green tubes here, you uh, might think this is a VFD uh, clock or VFD display, vacuum fluorescent display, but no, it's not. It are so-called Thyrotron uh, tubes. Um, if you look up Thyrotron uh, at Wikipedia or any other place, uh, you will find that the original Thyrotrons uh, were also called trigger tubes. And uh, you could uh, see that them, they, are, they work like a thyristor or SCR. They are like a neon glow lamp uh, together with a uh, trigger gate. But, um, of course, th these have no similarity with the original uh, Thyrotron uh, tubes. These are Thyrotron display tubes. Uh, they are from uh, Russia and it's the type ITS1A. They are quite expensive. Uh, expect to pay around uh, $200 uh, from uh, from eBay, from the Russian uh, eBay sellers, which still have them uh, NOS, new old stock. And um, this is obviously a kit from um, Mr. Nixie. Uh, I will give you the link to the kit uh, down in the description or in the comments. And so let's take a little look around. Um, what's all on board. Um, you can see the tubes are quite big. Uh, they are a bit uh, like little uh, cubes. And what, what else can we see? We can see three uh, push buttons, uh, set, adjust and alarm. So uh, the uh, clock has uh, many functions, but that's not important for me. Important was uh, just to get them working. Uh, you can see the, the uh, case is uh, laser cut, laser cut um, acrylic plus uh, some additional laser cut plastics. Uh, the kit is also around 200 uh, euros. So altogether, uh, the tubes plus the kit, that's quite an expensive uh, experience. Um, but it was one of the last uh, display technology tubes from ancient times that was still missing in my collections. So let's take another uh, further look around. Um, you can see perhaps that there are some little trim pots under each uh, tube. These are for the individual brightness adjustment because uh, the tubes, uh, they don't have, uh, it's, it's hard to get six one with exactly uh, even uh, and, and the same brightness. So you can adjust the brightness of the tubes piece by piece. And on the uh, back side, we can see the USB uh, power supply. It's simply a five volt uh, mini USB. Um, uh, wall ward uh, adapter and some additional LEDs, data and sync. That, that is because you can uh, plug in either a GPS uh, receiver for uh, exact time re reception or here in Europe more common is the uh, time signal DCF. Um, which is uh, transmitted in uh, long wave, in the long wave range at 77.5 kilohertz. And we can see some uh, more, uh, another push button for daylight saving time. So you can quickly change from standard time to daylight saving time. And two little LEDs uh, still uh, to the right of it, uh, which display daylight saving time and alarm. On the back, turn it around, you can see the uh, description uh, by Mr. Nixie. And uh, what's uh, quite uh, interesting about the, um, uh, here we still have down below, after it has focused, some settings, let's turn it around, uh, some settings for uh, the high voltage um, power supply. I will come back to that in a second. 
uh, we have the uh, super cap power backup so uh, the the clock keeps the time even if uh, if you have a power failure for uh, around an hour here we have a little temperature sensor because you perhaps already saw that uh, once each minute it can display the temperature and uh, here you can set which uh, module for time reception you have uh, installed in case you do have one installed so we will take a look at the um, at the uh, PCB uh, at the schematics in a second but I will demonstrate you after refocusing uh, one thing that I do usually do with all my tube clocks what you cannot see here is the contrast between the uh, the lit up uh, segments and the uh, surrounding uh, environmental light is not very good which means they are not very bright and you can um, you can improve the contrast especially if you use this clock in brightly lit rooms just by either painting them with uh, with green glass color or glass paint I think it's called um, and to demonstrate you the effect I just take a little piece of um, green colored plastic film I just have to get rid of the reflections so you perhaps can see the contrast improves quite substantially if you use a uh, filter in the same color uh, as the uh, display color of the tubes just once again and you can see it's much more contrasty uh, if if we get the reflections from my studio light a little bit outside so and I usually paint uh, all my Nixie tubes and uh, VFD tube clocks and this um, uh, this thyretron clock I usually paint them all with a glass paint in in the right color and this improves contrast very much I still uh, I, I didn't find the time until now to paint uh, this one and that way I can show you the difference in contrast so that, that that's one of the disadvantages they are um, they have much lower brightness than a usual VFD clock you cannot see this here uh, on the video simply because I adjusted the lighting uh, here in the room so that you can better see the the uh, tubes now what what's very special of these uh, thyretron uh, tubes is um, the uh, control voltage for the segments is TTL compatible which means um, you can um, you can control the segments uh, just with a 5 volt TTL or CMOS uh, signals uh, but on the and that, that's quite unique for uh, tube displays for example Nixie displays they they need uh, they need uh, transistors uh, that have a breakdown voltage uh, above 100 volts and here you can uh, control the the segments um, just uh, directly with the outputs of a microcontroller if the microcontroller is running with uh, 5 volts but on the downside is the uh, supply voltages for uh, these uh, special Thyvertron clocks they are extremely complicated you need all in all I think five different voltages let, let me look it up you need minus 270 volt you need plus 90 and plus 45 volts and then 5 volts as control voltage so all in all four different voltages going from plus 5 volt to plus 40, 45 to plus 90 and finally to minus 270 so you can imagine uh, the power supply section of the circuit is uh, quite uh, extensive and we take a look at the um, uh, at the uh, schematics just in a minute uh, just to uh, tell you a little bit more about the function you perhaps can see here are so some little so-called rocket LEDs uh, which uh, 
can be used as a separator between uh, between the hours and minutes and seconds or as a AM PM signal but I, I find this uh, totally unfitting if you have a, a, a old vintage display tube so why add some modern LEDs to that which additionally don't have the same color so I don't understand why uh, the uh, supplier of this or the inventor uh, of this kit uh, used these uh, LEDs and furthermore what, what I really find annoying you can uh, light up the back of the troops also with RGB three color LEDs in, in rainbow colors and so on and I think uh, that does not do good justice what you can see here is uh, the, uh, uh, the segments are peri periodically a roll through like in a slot machine uh, that is for um, keeping all the segments uh, alive and not getting what's called cathode poisoning uh, which is quite common with Nixie tubes and apparently also with uh, Thyretron uh, tubes. You, you can set of course in the menu all of the uh, functions if you want to display temperature if you want to periodically display the uh, date instead of the time as you can see here 4th of January 2017 uh, you can set night modes and alarm times etc etc so uh, the the menu itself it, it has I think more than 30 um, uh, points uh, just to set but I think this is uh, the uh, most basic setting without the additional LEDs and um, just the pure uh, Thyretron display and with uh, periodically displaying not only time but also date and um, the temperature here in the room. So that was it for a quick uh, look. Perhaps we can see a little bit downward. Uh, here into the PCB. I won't take it apart because it took me quite some time to build this up and not to break the acrylic uh, parts. You can see a little LDR and light dependent resistor so you, you also have a menu point where you can uh, set the brightness of the, um, of the Thyretron tubes adapting to the environmental light. Uh, but I've set it all here to uh, full brightness because the brightness even at full level is not very high. So um, we also can see some capacitors and diodes here for the voltage supply. We can see the quartz for the, uh, for the microcontroller and the keeping the uh, internal time when you don't have a time signal. And uh, well, on the other side from the back we don't see much more. We see the uh, super cap here for um, for the for keeping the time if you if you have a power failure, and uh, basically the um, uh, the uh, PCB um, and the circuit is open source, but the firmware of the controller is not open source as far as I know. So um, if you uh, want to build one of your own and save some money, perhaps you can buy the controller uh, separately and, and build your own. But I think it's easier just uh, to build it as a uh, pre-assembled kit. The SMD parts come already soldered when you buy the kit, so you only have to solder the through-hole parts. And um, what takes most of the time is uh, the Thyretron tubes. Uh, they have, I think, um, more than 12 little leads, uh, which are very delicate and difficult to solder. And um, um, making the whole PCB it took me nearly half a day uh, to get it all working. And I even in the mean in the beginning, I had a failure. The clock, the displays, uh, simply stopped working or behaved erratically and uh, you can already see there are uh, below each of the tubes there is a little 16-pin uh, IC uh, that is a shift register 
uh, because the segments are not directly controlled uh, from the microcontroller, but there is a chain of six, or the signal for the segments goes uh, through a chain of six uh, 74 HC595 uh, shift registers. And uh, the second one was broken. Um, I asked the uh, Mr. Nixie, uh, the supplier of the kit, uh, if he ever had experienced a failing uh, shift register. He said no. Well, when, when I uh, replaced it, uh, which also was not very easily done, uh, it immediately um, was working again without any problem. And now it runs for, I think, half a year without any failure. So I think this was a really a one time, once in, hopefully once in a lifetime failure. But be aware, um, uh, all the, the circuit is quite sensitive. Uh, apparently it, it was perhaps from, from uh, static discharge, I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, these things don't last forever. The tubes have a limited lifetime and um, just watch out not to get any static dis uh, discharges here with the with the open lying uh, PCB and uh, especially the shift register. So that was it for a short look and for those who are interested we will now still take a little look at the uh, schematics and uh, see how the uh, basic functionality works and for the others uh, I already say bye until next time and so let's make a break and uh, go over to the schematics. So we won't go into uh, every detail just take a quick look at the basic uh, elements. So here at the top we have the uh, five volt uh, mini USB input with uh, some uh, filter um, in inductances uh, plus filter capacitors. Um, we have uh, the input from the uh, time signal receiver, either the DCF or a GPS signal with a uh, conditioning with some uh, transistors. And um, we have here the uh, temperature sensor, the classical DS1820 from Dallas Semiconductor now a Maxime integrated. Uh, we have the central uh, microcontroller, a PIC16F 1938, uh, a little uh, buzzer, uh, the push buttons, the, um, the uh, time uh, qu um, quartz crystal with uh, the classical 32.768 kilohertz. And the first really interesting thing is here the high voltage uh, power supply. Um, it, is, uh, it is a simple uh, PWM uh, controlled signal. Um, so the, uh, the, uh, here we have a little uh, MOSFET and uh, the uh, inductor here for the MOSFET to give a little switch mode regulator. The voltage is tapped off here with a little uh, trim pot to adjust the basic high voltage and this is fed back into an analog uh, input for the microcontroller. And then uh, we see a um, multiple voltage uh, multiplier. I think it's a Cockroft Walton uh, voltage multiplier. Um, so it's, it's not the full uh, minus uh, 270 volts here generated, but instead um, the, uh, there is, I think it's only 45 volt basically generated and then the voltage is multiplied up to plus 90 and here with the, uh, with the other diodes the negative uh, voltages are generated. So because we only need a few milliamps or even less, uh, we, we don't need any power electronics here. These are all uh, ballpark uh, diodes and uh, capacitors. And what else have we, we have uh, for feedback for the P PWM uh, controller, uh, which is um, made in software in the microcontroller. 
we have a little optocoupler, we have the LDR here for a brightness measurement of the environmental brightness, and we can see the, the, uh, the, um, the LEDs here. And then, as I already told you, um, each, um, each tube is controlled by a, an 8-bit uh, shift register, which is cascaded. So all the output of uh, one of the shift registers goes into the input of the next one. They, are, they have a strobe input uh, so that the uh, display content is not immediately transfer to the output just uh, only after they get a common strobe signal, then all six shift registers change their outputs to the, uh, to the data they have received uh, before. Here we see the uh, RGB LEDs where you can light up the background of the troops in any unfitting color or even a transitioning rainbow uh, color if you want. And we see the little uh, trim pots here at the minus 270 volts. Um, um, control voltage input for controlling the brightness of each individual tube. So um, all in all, um, the, the power supply is uh, quite uh, extensive, as I already told you because you need, uh, except for the five volts that you get from the USB power supply after some filtering, uh, you need this plus 45, plus 90 and minus 270 uh, volt. All the rest is uh, kind of standard uh, display technologies. And um, you can download the data sheet, uh, the, the, um, the uh, schematic, from the supplier, uh, from Mr. Nixie, on his homepage, I will give you the link down below, uh, together with the, uh, with the manual for all the functionalities of the uh, clock and the uh, build-up man manual. And so that was it uh, for a short look uh, inside how they managed to get the different voltages. Quite interesting, they only have uh, one uh, easily built uh, a switch mode regulator with a uh, standard MOSFET and a little inductor. So that's the basic circuit. Uh, the, the, um, the gate is of course controlled from the microcontroller with a PWM signal. Uh, we have the uh, feedback here of, uh, through the, of the analog voltage uh, here with the um, uh, into the uh, into the an analog input of the microcontroller, and the uh, that's quite interesting that you can generate positive and negative voltages f only with one switch mode uh, transistor. So that was perhaps the uh, most interesting part to see how they uh, generate um, three different voltages, two of them positive. Uh, one of them negative with only uh, one switching transistor, only one analog feedback and only one PWM output, which here comes through the uh, optocoupler into the uh, diode multiplier. And uh, that, is, uh, that was uh, the thing uh, why I didn't uh, conceive a circuit of my own because I thought, well, you need three different uh, high voltage um, switch mode power supplies, but that was, uh, that's quite a good idea because these uh, Thyretron display tubes are very demanding concerning not their power consumption, but their, uh, the many voltages that you need and uh, the, what you get in in, instead, um, back is that you can control the voltages directly with a TTL, or in this case, HCMOS IC with uh, just 5 volts. So that was it for a quick look at the uh, schematics. You can download it all from, uh, from the homepage of uh, Mr. Nixie. And uh, I will give you the link down below, as already mentioned. And that was it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.